What if you feel like you can't have relationships without drama and gossip being a part of it? Do you feel like relationships that are healthy, that are peaceful, are actually boring? A lot of people that were raised in households of survival where there was chaos and unpredictability and, you know, a lack of healthy boundaries, right? They learned that things like drama and gossip are just a normal part of relationships. Let me say this. They are a part of unhealthy relationships. I don't like to say the word normal in this because anything like that, you know, it becomes normalized in households where there is survival dynamics and everything, but it's not a normal dynamic, right? Drama and gossip, basically meaning talking about other people, is triangulation. It is an unhealthy and toxic dynamic. But what if you are somebody who learned these dynamics and you learned that these dynamics are normal? And not only that, but you're just not attracted to relationship dynamics where drama and gossip are not present. This is a fascinating thing to dive into because it helps understand where it is you came from. And if you want to get on the other side of that, what it is that you would have to do in order to achieve that, right? Drama and gossip is something that's challenging to get past because the adrenaline and cortisol that comes with the dynamic of triangulation, you know, um, when you're talking about somebody that's not present, you know, a lot of it has to do with vicariously living through somebody else, right? Um, it's wonderful to know for somebody that is, I don't know if it's entirely sadistic, right? Um, deriving pleasure from somebody else's pain, right? But when you know that your life is not going as bad as somebody else's life is, that can be very liberating for a lot of people, especially those who find themselves consistently in unhealthy and negative situations and experiences in life. They actually feel relieved when they find out that somebody has it far better or uh, far worse than they do, right? And the most important thing to understand is that your relationship will actually lack depth if you continue to find yourself being attracted to and indulging in dynamics of drama and gossip. That's just the reality of it, right? Because those are boundary violations. Those are triangulations with other people where you're talking about other people that are not present. It's not healthy. And it's actually not deep. It's very, um, it's very shallow. It's very superficial. It shows that somebody is actually emotionally unavailable for themselves because whatever pain it is that they find within themselves is too scary to deal with. So they cover it up with talking about other people rather than dealing with themselves, right? If you find yourself in relationships with people, whether boyfriend, girlfriend, friends, family, whatever it is, right, that these people uh, indulge in drama and gossip, these people are emotionally immature and emotionally unavailable which is why they insert other people to distract them from themselves, to distract you from themselves, right? One of the most important things to understand about this is the dynamic where you are trying to distract yourself. It's a defense mechanism, right? It's too painful to look at the self. So what do you do? You look at somebody else. You introduce somebody else into the dynamic, and that's the challenge here. And it's important to understand that when you can see it for what it is and feel the there, there there could be somewhat of confusion there like have you ever have you ever actually been aware that you're attracted to drama and gossip right what does it feel like to actually become aware that you're attracted to those dynamics do you actually like it or is it just a neurochemical uh emotional experience of comfort and familiarity right does it make you feel distant from yourself does it make you feel distant from the other person does it make you feel weird to be talking about people that are not present right? These are all things to consider when understanding what all of this actually means. Because it's important to see it for what it is and understand that like, oh wow, it's very hard to hold a relationship that does not include drama and gossip, that does not include, this is pseudo-intimacy. This is enmeshment. This is uh, boundarylessness. This is my shit is your shit and your shit is my shit. And we're also going to introduce other people's shit into this. And we're going to call that intimacy. It's not, in, it, it's at least not healthy intimacy. It's pseudo-intimacy. It is a very unhealthy dynamic that stops you from going deeper with yourself as well as going deeper with other people because it just keeps things very surface level on both your ends and has you covering up both of your pain and both of your insecurities with other people's shit, right? 
And it's just fascinating because, you know, I've done a lot of work on myself to get closer to, you know, being somebody who isn't attracted to dynamics of drama and gossip because I used to be, right? And I look at it now and it's like, wow, there's so much potential to create wild emotional experiences with people outside of drama and gossip, right? How well do I know myself? How well with my self-awareness can I know you? How safe can this intersubjective space become between self and other if triangulation is not present, right? How deep can we go if we just focus on you and I? I and thou, right? And um, it's just, it's really a wild thing to heal from being attracted to dynamics of drama and gossip because you realize that the entire dynamic is about healthy intimacy. It's about self and other. It's about the deeper aspects of individuality and actually getting to know self and getting to know other. Drama and gossip really distract you from who you are. They distract you from... Uh, discovering more about yourself and really being able to hold healthy um, relationships with other people. That's, that's the reality of it, right? And understanding that for what it is and actually seeing that and knowing what it means is the important part here. That's the, uh, the, the, the ticket out, really, you know? And when you can actually do the work to become unattracted to drama and gossip, it completely transforms how you approach relationships. Like you will see that stuff and you won't be attracted to it anymore. And um, it will just, it will really change how you see relationships and everything. And that's really the important note. It really is. It's a totally transformative process. But, you know, are you aware, if you are, by the way, um, are you aware that you're attracted to drama and gossip? Are you aware that you triangulate other people into your social experiences and situations do you talk about other people that are not present how do you talk about them do you feel like you may be distracting yourself with that material from yourself does it feel like your connection or your relationships with other people are very superficial it's not good or bad or right or wrong it's just not healthy and when you move away from drama and gossip which you first have to become unattracted to it which you know it just really requires understanding that your relationships will remain superficial unless the drama and gossip is out of there. You know, that's the reality of it. You need to see it for what it is, and you need to understand that um, you can have more depth with people when you let go of these dynamics that bring, um, you know, the hormones of stress, adrenaline, and cortisol into your life, right? Removing that stuff, becoming peaceful. A lot of people are very bored of peace. They're very bored of healthy relationships. They're, um, they, it's almost like they don't know what to do with them. They don't know what to do unless they're triangulating somebody else, unless they're talking about somebody else. It's just not a healthy dynamic. You can do whatever you want to. It's not good or bad or right or wrong. Um, I mean, I would say morally, it's not, it's not right. Um, it's just not healthy. The biggest thing to look at is the health, right? The overall health of the situation. And, you know, if there's something there like that, that can cause long-term issues, you know, um, boundary violations. Triangulating people is boundary violating. It really is. Drama and gossip is boundary violating. And it's really important to see it that way for what it is because it can completely transform the entire dynamic of the relationships.